Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for being here with us this evening and being interested in our event. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about tech insights, prompt engineering for text generation, or in other words, we will be playing with GPT-3 and chat GPT. I am Mariana Asprowska, and I am part of Women in Tech Macedonia. Tonight, I will be your moderator, but I am not the star of this evening. This spot is reserved for not one, but two amazing speakers. See, when we first did our um, webinar on ChatGPT and AI exactly a month ago on February 22nd, we couldn't even imagine the big interest we are going to encounter. So sticking with only one webinar of such kind was not an option. Therefore, here we are again tonight, spending a wonderful Wednesday evening speaking about one of these topics that we are all very interested in and who are the better speakers if not these faces that we are having tonight. One of them already very familiar to you from the last time. So Jancho Tujarski Striki is a professional in the IT sphere for already 30 years now. He has spent 13 years interested in machine learning and following the new trends on a daily basis. If I start naming all his work achievements, it is going to take forever. So I would just say that currently he is intensively, intensively working on processing ECG signals with AI. Stricky, it's my honor to welcome you again. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, Mariana. Thank you very much for such a nice introduction. Uh, I couldn't say it better. Really. Uh, so it's my pleasure to to be here with you, and uh, and again I will talk about uh, uh, GPT and uh, and me and Demi will try to to show that the power of uh, GPT uh, automatically generated text and a uh, few technicalities around it and. Uh, I expect to be more fun when we start with uh, showing uh, examples what what can be achieved with ChatGPT and GPT-4. I expect that to be very much fun as well. Looking forward to that part. But um, Stricky's knowledge is not alone tonight. It is accompanied by a new fresh face that we did not see last week, uh, last month, but it's here tonight. That is Emilia Georgievska, who is a MarTech engineer with experience as Python engineer, freelancer, business development, research, and copywriting. Her work is widely recognized. And why wouldn't it be? This girl is amazing and goes by the motto of work, have fun, and laugh. Um, she has a little project or a not so little 30-page analysis that she has done uh, in the AI race by the big language models. And this analysis being so comprehensive is commonly referred to by her colleagues as her unofficial master thesis. So I'm very much interested to see what Amy has to share regarding this um, for the next hour, hour and a half with us. Amy, welcome to you too. Good evening, everybody. It's a really nice opportunity to be in front of all of you and speak about this trendy topic. I really find it very interesting and I couldn't have a better intro, I guess. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you here. So without further ado, I will uh, shortly give the virtual floor to Striki and Amy. But before that, allow me to remind you that the last 20 minutes of uh, tonight's event are reserved for your questions. So at any moment throughout the presentation, whenever you have a question or something that sparkles your interest and you would like to know more about, feel free to drop that question in the Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll make sure to return to those questions towards the end. Other than your questions, tonight we also want to hear a bit more of your ideas of what we can prompt engineer together with Striki during the second half of the presentation. So if you have questions, drop them at the Q&A section. If you have some ideas for cool prompts that you would like to see um, developed further with Striki and Amy, feel free to do that as well, and we'll make sure to come back at them. But now I think this, this event is not about me, so it's time to, to leave it to Striki and Amy to do what they know best. Striki and Amy, as I said, the virtual floor is yours, and I'll be attentively following from the background. Awesome. So I think that we're ready to start. Uh, first, the classic question, can you see my screen? <laughs> Is everything okay on your side? Because I didn't hear anything, whether you're able to see yes, the presentation. Yes, you can see the screen. <laughs> okay, great. So 
I'm really happy that I was given this opportunity to speak about chat GPT and prompting. Uh, I intentionally didn't use the prompt engineering, the word prompt engineering, and you'll see why in the following slides. But anyway, this is a very trendy topic, and I'm very happy that I was given this chance by the woman in tech, um, Macedonia. And also uh, share the floor with uh, Striki or Stan Chotujarski, which is a recognized expert in AI, machine learning, and data science overall. Without further ado, I will try to give an intro about myself. Uh, so um, I'm a research-backed and uh, business-focused computer science engineer that is specializing in content engineering and end-to-end -end SEO. I, I studied at the Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering in Skopje, Macedonia, but I now work for an Italian company called, called WorldDiff, which is specializing in knowledge graphs, linked data principles, uh, solving SEO challenges through an AI and also generative AI. And uh, my primary company is still uh, Media Mark Saturn, which is the third largest e-commerce retailer in Germany. And I also have my own work, uh, research work published on IEEE, co-authored by the wonderful uh, professor, uh, PhD, uh, Georgina Mircheva. And I was also very fortunate enough to uh, visit certain scientific institutions like CERN, for example, which is the place where the World Wide Web was born, and also JRC, European Commission in Italy, ISPRA. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because all of these institutions, all of these events kind of shaped me as an SEO, because as a person and also as an engineer and overall, and how I think about a future and how that kind of set my course and how I think about visionary thinking overall. Now, like I said, uh, I work for WordLift, which is a company based in Rome, Italy. We help our clients increase revenues and audience engagement by automating SEO and digital marketing tasks by using AI. Some of our clients are Cafe Media, Farfetch, Ray-Ban, Oakley, Coca-Cola, Switzerland, Ipen Digital, Financial Times, and The Next Web. Very interesting company to be in. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because we specialize in generative AI that is specifically interesting for this talk tonight. So uh, we have been using generative AI for already some quite some time, I think few years already. We are waiting for this moment for come. I, I think that um, we were repeating it over and over again. Is this the year when it's going to happen? Is this the year when it's going to happen? And it finally happens. So this is an example of an e-commerce use case that we had on our side, where basically a neural a multimodal search system helps an e-commerce store improve its search functionality to improve user experience and increase sales. Well, on the other hand, generative AI helps e-commerce stores to generate high quality product descriptions, images and videos, which can help them boost their visibility on search engines and attract more customers. On the left side is an experiment that our CEO did for Ray-Ban. For example, we try to combine as the products that Ray-Ban offers like certain sunglasses and then match it with the a uh, picture of our potential clients in future so that they can try out through generative AI how this product might look like on them uh, before they even buy the product. Now we are very known for our practicality here at WorldLift and the company that I work for. Uh, so there's a freebie section uh, on the following link you can find ready to use uh, prompts, chat GPT prompts for different areas like UX design, sales, marketing, computer science and coding and uh, overall several areas of interest that might be useful for you because I want you to go out with something practical out of this webinar and not just uh, the presentation itself. But this will be shared with you after the event through the presentation and through the video and maybe through email. Now I want to explain how this presentation is structured. We basically have two parts. The first part will be dedicated on the bit technical details and a short overview because I consider impossible to talk about a topic without being able to at least on a high level in a layman terms with technical details here and there uh, explain how these uh, models work. And in the second half, uh, including Stoyancho's part, we will have a practical demos and we'll generate certain examples, certain pr prompts, and some useful, we'll mention some useful tools that we're using in our day-to-day -day work. Now, the road to chat GPT started with GPT itself. Then we managed to go to GPT-2, then to GPT-3, then to GPT-3.5 and instruct GPT and up to chat GPT on its own. I'm not going to explain all the details about how the previous models works, uh, work because that's not the point of this webinar. But anyway, I think that everybody are interested to learn what's the data that this model models has been trained on. So how many sentences? I could not find this in the GPT-3 paper. So here's back of the envelope calculation. According to the table on the left, 
um, 500, 500 billion tokens were used. So basically you can take a, think of a token as a word. Uh, and basically if we take uh, the calculation that Google says that there are uh, 15 up to 20 words per sentence or average, that means that 500 billion tokens can translate to 25 or to 33 billion sentences. So data that is used in this case is taken from command crawl, filtered, then web text to, then we have books uh, sources, books one and books two, and then Wikipedia as well. Now let's explain what a token is. For example, let's say the follow, take the following sentence that you see on the screen. You miss 100% of the shots you do not take. So basically, if we go that uh, side part by part, we, we can see you miss 100% is a separate token of the shots you do not take. That's basically why we have two different tokens here. So 11 tokens in uh, total when you count them uh, overall. So that's a token. Basically, a token is equivalent to a word. And why is this called GPT? GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Generative because it can generate the next word. Pre-trained because it was pre-trained on a lot of text from the internet and thus ready to respond to questions. Transformer because the underlying deep neural network uses a particular kind of network architecture called the transformer. And that's it. So Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Now, I won't explain how GPT works. Uh, we have a quick overview, unfortunately, only in Macedonia. I think that was Macedonian. That was the session that Svancho held the last time uh, in the webinar, everything you always wanted to know about GPT, but were afraid to ask that you can follow on the following link. Maybe after this presentation and overall, it will be given to you so you can click it, you can watch it in Macedonian and see uh, all the technical details regarding it. If you're not a Macedonian speaker, I do encourage you to visit some YouTube videos to learn about how GPT works, uh, because that's not the purpose of uh, this presentation. I will just explain how it's constructed and why it's constructed in the way it's made. Now, these models are just text predicting. This is the summary of the all technical mathematical operations that are happening in the background. What's important for you to know is that they're taking a prompt. It is basically an input to the model. They're doing some complex mathematical calculations in the background and working with neural network. And then they're basically trying to predict next word in a sentence, giving the previous word, words that we know um, before this word needs to be generated. Now, GPT and GPT-2 were trained in a very similar predict the next word fashion and GPT-3 was trained in the same fashion as well. But there are two key differences, like GPT-3 was trained on much more data and the GPT-3's underlying neural network was much bigger. That means that the GPT-3 has 175 billion numbers of parameters and to the researcher's surprise, GPT-3 turned out to be uh, to have unanticipated abilities that GPT and GPT-2 didn't have. So basically GPT-3 is able of generating amazing continuations from a starting prompt. Let's say that a prompt, like I said, this is a starting sentence that you're fitting to the model, uh, is the importance of, of being on Twitter and that we like to continue the sentence. And if you work with GPT-3, then the generated response, generated continuation can be, it's a curious fact that the last remaining form of social life in which the people of London are still interested is Twitter, and so on and so on. You can read everything in the presentation afterwards. So this is a continuation generated by GPT-3. What is a prompt? So basically, let's clarify this first. A prompt is a combination of text instructions that you pass to the generative model, which uses these inputs to produce an output, which is equivalent to a completion. The way do you describe what you want from the system is always textual, and the textual features depend on what you want the result to be. So once again, a prompt is a combination of text instructions that you pass to the generative model, which uses those inputs to produce output equals completion. That's the important thing here. Now, GPT-3 has some problems. Sometimes it produces unhelpful answers. Uh, it's able to text predict or generate the next word repeatedly use it what, using what it has gleaned from the billions of sentences it was trained on. However, GPT-3 was, was not explicitly trained to generate good answers to user questions. 
For example, um, let's say, take an example of an unhelpful response. Let's say that the prompt is explain the moon landing to a six-year-old in a few sentences. So the GPT-3 response will be not a answer to what we expect in a chat-based form, but rather a summary, explain the theory of gravity to a six-year-old. That is not what we intended to achieve. So the solution to this problem is basically involving three steps in the process. The first step will be to get humans to write questions and uh, helpful, accurate, and inoffensive answers for them. About 11,000 such pairs were created. For example, if we have the prompt now, the same prompt from before, explain the moon landing to a six-year-old in a few sentences, then we will have human-created answer, that is people went to the moon in a big rocket, walked around, and came back to Earth. They took pictures of what they saw and sent them back so we could all see them. So this is basically what we are expecting to see, a more chatty behavior. And this step is basically called uh, supervised fine tuning. So we have humans writing questions and helpful answers. Then we take some questions. Users have asked GPT-3 and have humans create good answers to them as well. About 1,500 such pairs were put together. And then we create uh, 12,500 question answer pace as training data and train, train GPT-3 some more. So all these steps are summarized, are sup a supervised, a supervised fine tuning, SFT. The problem with this approach is that it works better compared to what we got before from GPT-3, but it doesn't scale really. The writing high quality answers to thousands of questions is difficult and expensive. So we need to find a different approach. So what's easier than writing a good answer? Ranking answers basically by that are written by somebody else. So we can ask GPT-3 to generate several answers to a question and have humans rank them from the most useful to least useful. So that's basically the new step that we're introducing in the process. And this idea forms the basis of step two, collect questions, get GPT-3 to respond with several answers, get humans to rank these answers for each question from most helpful to least helpful. And about 33,000 search questions are ranked uh, and ranked answers for each question were compiled this way. Note, please note that humans were not involved in creating answers, only in the process of ranking them. And given our question and an answer, the reward model can provide a rating. A rating is basically a single, single number that indicates how good the answer is. So basically, if we have a good number like uh, 0 0.95, that's a relatively good answer um, for the prompt to explain the moon landing to a six-year-old. And that's basically the reward model that we are building. So that is how we uh, managed to get to GPT 3.5 and instruct GPT. So fine tune GPT by using answer question, question answer pairs, compile uh, pairs, compile 33,000 questions and use this question and rating from the reward model to answer this question and fine tune uh, SFT GPT 3 using reinforcement learning. By the way, steps three and uh, two and three are referred to as reinforcement learning from human feedback for obvious reasons. So step one, we have fine-tuned GPT-3 by using 12,500 question pairs written by humans, and then fine-tuned GPT-3 is FT uh, GPT-3. Compile 33,000 questions, have SFT GPT-3 provide multiple answers for each question, and have humans rank the answers. So this is the process of human feedback. With this training data, build an answer rating model this, that is called the reward model. And then by using 31,000 questions and the rating from the reward model for the uh, answer for this, each question, fine tune SFT GPT-3 by using reinforcement learning. So chat GPT is fine tuned from a model in the GPT 3.5 series. And uh, we trained this model by using reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, using the same method as the instruct GPT, but with slight differences in the data collection setup. So this should all sound familiar now because we explained the, pre the steps in the, previous, in the previous slides. Now, what does these slight differences in the data collection setup mean? That means that the training data is conversations uh, instead of the question response pairs that were used so far. And this is obviously good design because we want to build a conversational bot or chatbot in other words. 
So we trained an initial model using supervised fine tuning. Human AI trainers provided conversation in, in which they played both sides, like the user and the AI assistant. We mixed this new dialogue data set with the Instruct GPT data set, which will transform into a dialogue format. And a new dialogue data set was created and the answer, answer, uh, question answer data set we saw earlier was transformed into a dialogue format. Because like we said, the idea is to create a model that is good for chatting. So let's train it on a chatty training data. Okay, uh, the steps two or three, uh, to create the reward model for reinforcement learning with two conversations that AI trainers had with the chatbot, selected randomly written model written message, sampled several alternative completions and had AI trainers rank them. Using these rewards models, we can fine tune the model by using an algorithm called proximal policy optimization. I will not dig deeper into uh, here. We performed several iterations of this process. So this is very similar to the steps two or three, uh, where we previously we had humans ranking the model outputs, built the reward model with this data, use the reward model ratings to fine tune using proximal policy optimization. And basically that is how ChatGPT came into being. So basically from GPT to GPT-2 to GPT-3 up to GPT-3.5 and instruct GPT and then ChatGPT itself. And finally, we are done with the technical details. I think that that was the, the, the most important technical, high level technical overview that you could get. And I think that when we talk about ChatGPT overall, that reminds us of something from the past. It reminds me of a tool that I had when I was a kid. This is Clippy, a Microsoft Assistant that existed, existed in the 90s. So back then I remember I was just a small kid that didn't have the mathematical or computer science uh, or hardware for the knowledge foundation that I needed to, that I have at the current moment to understand what is possible to do. And basically I remember myself trying all these things that I was doing with ChatGPT today back then and it didn't work because we were not that advanced. And I deinstalled the plugin from, from the Microsoft products. So it didn't work for me, but I'm not happy that it's finally done with, with a different Microsoft product. Now, what is prompt engineering and is it considered to be true engineering? This is very, very interesting topic. I had asked Chad GPT to answer this question, to explain how it defines engineering. And according to Jet GPT, engineering is the application of scientific, mathematical, and technical knowledge to build design and maintain structures, machines, and systems. So basically we need scientific, mathematical, and technical knowledge to problem solve certain innovative, so and create certain innovative solutions to complex challenges. However, this is not the case here because the entry barrier for experimenting with these LLM large language model systems is relatively low and does not require really a degree in computer science or engineering. The opposite actually happens. You will need to ignore certain parts of your understanding, technical understanding about how LLMs work and use specific straight to the point natural language prompts to precisely define what you want from the system. Now, before we go into practical examples, uh, just a few more slides. So what are the limitations of JetGPT? You also need to know what are the limitations so that you're able to uh, operate with it more um, efficiently. ChatGPT does not possess knowledge or has true understanding, logic, and intelligence. It's just text predicting. Like I said before, it's not able to even access the internet. Maybe it's able to do this through Bing, but definitely through ChatGPT, it's not able to access links, analyze links. It's not able to access the internet, analyze your documents, uh, unless it was trained on them. Secondly, since it's only capable of predicting and not reasoning, it's entirely un inadequate for solving math problems. So it is having difficulties with, with certain mathematical, uh, performing certain mathematical operations. Thirdly, the model has biases and discriminations towards certain groups or individuals, but this is not a result of its own opinions, but rather the data and the people who created this data online, like on forums and everything where you have different individuals behaving in different ways that you cannot control. So it doesn't display this behavior because it has something against you, but rather because the data that it has been trained on has these shortcomings. Finally, uh, uh, fourthly, actually, ChatGPT cannot self-reflect on itself, judge its outputs, or disclose the details of its architecture and exact parameters that were used to train it, including the layers in the model. 
Fifthly, ChatGPT, we need to acknowledge this, that it has a negative environmental impact, which is producing a carbon footprint of around 23 kilos CO2 daily, as estimated by Casper Gross Albin Ludwigsen in his Towards Data Science blog post. And finally, its outputs can be detected and slide by some search, search engines. That means that if you're in the content marketing business or in the content business overall and publish something online, if you um, up, uh, upload or basically publish your content from JGPT as it is, uh, without any additional human refinement, you will have problem. Amy, allow me to, uh, to let you know that um, uh, we are nearing towards the, the end of this part. Uh, so you know what to do best from here. Yeah. Okay. Finally, failures encountered in ChatGPT will guide us towards the utilization of knowledge graphs and semantics and technologies, but I will dig deeper maybe uh, into this during the QA session. And now let's study the anatomy of a ChatGPT mega prompt. So how to write the most effective ChatGPT mega prompt is to first simulate a persona, explain the task in the second step, in the third step, uh, explain the steps that are needed to complete the task, then the context and constraints, the goal format output in the final phase and so on. So let's see uh, a practical example. So basically it's a hands-on time and for practical reasons, I interacted with ChatGPT. I have my screenshots in the presentation so that we are faster that way. So basically I'm trying to write a happy birthday card to my aunt in Australia. I started with a simple uh, um, requirement from ChatGPT, write a happy birthday card for my aunt in Australia. And as you can see, dear aunt, it's produced something. Uh, it's not super personalized. Uh, I'm grateful that you're ha uh, to have you in my life. Your kind kindness, warmth, and sense of humor always makes me feel special and love. Something that is general and overall applicable to every type of person out there. So I'm trying to improve the, the prompt a, a little bit. Uh, write a birthday card uh, for my aunt in Australia who is into travel, great foods and shopping. She's married and living in Sydney and has two grown up kids. Make it informal, playful and interesting. So what did I do here? I explained the person, I explained, the, gave more context that my aunt is into travel, great food and shopping. I also gave more context that she's married and living in Sydney and has two grown up kids. And I also made a request uh, to, for ChatGPT to make this informal, playful, and interesting. So now when you see this on the screen, you, have, uh, you need, can observe that it's more personalized compared to before. Yeah, I always look up to you for your amazing tense, taste and sense of adventure. You know all the best places to eat, shop, and explore in Sydney, blah, 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 blah. So it's a more, more personalized answer. Now... I'm improving this prompt even more. I want you to act. So basically we are having role playing here. I want you to act like the best copywriter in the world that is specializing in writing amazing and original birthday cards. And then I have the rest of the prompt of the previous um, uh, request that I had uh, sent to ChatGPT. So basically now I'm asking it to uh, be in a role of the best copywriter in the world. Let's see what it can produce. So now you can see that we are having a bigger uh, generated uh, response here. I'm very happy birthday to the, oops, sorry. Uh, okay, I made a mistake. Maybe I can come back. A very happy birthday to the most adventurous culinary savvy and style savvy aunt in Australia. Now explanation about the sharing your passion for travel. Uh, love great food for shopping. I know there's no shortage of amazing things to discover. So you can see that it wrote a more comprehensive explanation and more personalized birthday letter because I introduced the, the role of uh, the best copywriter in the world. And finally, because this is, this is not possible for me to fit it into a small business card, I want to give the final order about the output. So I wanted to make a short summary and sweet summary of the writing. So basically the same prompt for, from before, but make a short and sweet summary of the writing so that I can fit you into a small birthday card. And you can see it, it's making certain summary here, dear name, wishing you a happy birthday that is following basically the same style from before, the, the personalized one, but summarized somehow so that I can fit it into a small birthday card. 
some useful resources, edit GPT, which is uh, very useful for uh, proofreading, explain paper if you're working as a master student or a bachelor student and work with uh, research paper over, overall, this can help you um, navigate your way around research papers, learn prompting uh, available on the following link, you can uh, see everything in the presentation after the event. So, for example, I have written this text entry and make it look like it's written from a native English speaker. Online marketer spends the last two or three decades, not the best English on my way, but uh, I'm a not native English speaker, so I obviously make some mistakes. And I had ChatGPT uh, by using Edit GPT extension fix this for me. So basically, you can see all the parts on the screen that are fixed and all the green parts that are uh, the updated version or how this may look like, it will avail be available on the presentation. So this is basically the summary that ChatGPT created for me uh, with improved English uh, writing. So you can chat, use ChatGPT to help you out with obtaining info about a topic, with coding, code generation, code review, proofreading code, improve your writing, proofreading master thesis, CV, tailored cover letters, fixed essays, making a business proposal more persuasive, making summaries of stuff or creating outputs in a structured format, for example, bullet points, uh, JSON, tables, markdown, and so much more. We have only two, three more slides and Shiki is ready to go. Now, like I've been saying, we've been talking about this at WorldLift from 2021 and even from before, that the transformer era is unlocking new opportunities in the SEO space and overall in the AI space, but we need to be human first. So now we can uh, play with AI, but also uh, definitely hire a human and build a knowledge graph to improve our performance better. Uh, McKinsey basically stayed the same in 2023, but they were kind of late in the game compared to us because we were talking about this for quite some time. And finally, if you're in the content business and use ChatGPT for product descriptions, for explanations and so on, please be careful about how do you use it for online content because sometimes people uh, copy the regenerate response part into their content. So it can be easily detected uh, that this is not a natively written content by a human. So be wary about these parts. I think that we had all, one more about cars. So again, the person forgot to, to remove this part, regenerate response. And be careful uh, when reading um, financial advices and also medical related content. If they have a regenerate response, that means that it was created with ChatGPT or um, ChatGPT based uh, model. So be wary about these outputs because like I said, the final uh, conclusion will be these uh, models are just text predicting. They're not able to have true knowledge and understanding of the world around them. Thank you very much. I am very looking forward to the questions uh, in the Q&A section. I will now leave the uh, scene for Stoyancho. Stoyancho, we are very excited to see more practical examples and use cases of what you can show us uh, today. Uh, Amy, thank you very much. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, can yes. you hear me? OK, great. Uh, well, let me thank you very much for your great presentation and introduction. I'm definitely speaking English much better than me. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was famous in my in my uh, early school days, <laughs> and I was told by my friends that I speak English like Russian name. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, I'll do my best here. Uh, so so uh, uh, about uh, so, so your uh, your presentation was uh, pretty much uh, detailed and very intensive in uh, in the uh, in the volume and the quality of information you provided to the audience. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm really impressed. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you, uh, what in, impressed me personally from your presentation is that you showed uh, uh, real case uh, scenario, uh, real case. Uh, mm, examples uh, when people uh, that, that showed uh, to the audience that uh, people are really extensively using currently uh, GPT-3 and chat GPT for, for generating text that they are publishing. And uh, well, uh, I'm using this opportunity to, to, to try to explain and uh, please let me know if I'm clear enough or I should uh, 
elaborate this in uh, in more details uh, how actually dangerous this is uh, because uh, because uh, uh, chat gpt and uh, gpt and gpt4 and so on and gpt5 probably uh, all of them are are trained uh, based on a large uh, human uh, a large uh, volume of script texts from uh, from internet uh, from where else uh, internet is the most uh, is the most is, is the biggest uh, uh, source of uh, texts generated from humans uh, mostly from humans for now and and uh, my point is uh, uh, the more humans are using uh, gpt uh, 3 and now gpt 4 for generating uh, texts and putting it into a uh, web uh, 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 upcoming versions uh, uh, of uh, gpt 4 will be trained with those texts Meaning that uh, uh, G uh, so uh, GPT uh, four is uh, constantly improved and fine tuned and uh, and learn and teach him, teach him more and more with uh, his own texts, and this uh, uh, asymptotically leads to to uh, to not improving the quality of the texts, which is very best scenario. Uh, uh, and uh, finally, we'll have a situation when when the the majority of the texts on internet is uh, is uh, created and is generated by GPT-4, and GPT-4 will try to 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 teach himself from those texts auto generated by himself, and I can't see how this can how this can how this process can uh, can improve the quality of the texts that GPT-4 uh, will provide. And now, okay. Uh, uh, now back to my uh, presentation. Actually, actually, I don't have actual action plan for this presentation. I I prepared several uh, several nice uh, examples of uh, of texts generated from GPT from Chat GPT and GPT four uh, from the card uh, from the for, for the color from the cardiological uh, perspective uh, uh as i said i'm uh, uh i'm actually it was mariana who uh, who mentioned that that i'm working extensively these days uh, in innovation company uh about on analyzing pcg prof uh, uh recordings with ai and uh, i put there uh several uh numbers uh from uh, generated from a software that uh, analyzes ECG recordings and there are a number of heartbeats, normal and not that good, and some of them very bad uh, types of ECG uh, heartbeats. And then I asked uh, GPT to, to, to comment on this uh, text and uh, provide me an information, what is what does he think about them and what to do next. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I lost those uh, texts. Uh, those texts uh, they are currently not present in my in my uh, uh, history with ChatGPT. But uh, nevertheless, I'll try to let me share my screen. Uh, so. Uh, um, this no, wrong screen. Let me find some better one. This is the one I was looking for. Yeah. Get rid of. Okay. 
Can you see my screen? Okay, thanks. And I'm always looking. Okay. So, uh, yeah, here, here uh, history is temporarily unavailable, unfortunately. So uh, let's try to, to reproduce some text. I prepared some input that I preserved from my from my from my preparations for this session, and let's put this into chat GPT. Yeah. So this is, uh, uh, as I see, uh, as I can, see, as you can see, I'm uh, I'm monitoring my CG in the last thirty minutes. In my report, I can see that there are blah 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 several uh, numbers of heartbeats uh, uh, grouped by heartbeat types. There are N, uh, N bits, which means normal bits, ventricular bits, uh, ectopic bits, A bits, F bits, which is not good at all, uh, and. Uh, and episodes, normal episode, and then several types of tachycardias. And uh, now I'm uh, now we're asking uh, ChatGPT, uh, tell me more about my heart condition regarding above ECG report. I'm pressing enter, and let's see what ECG thinks about this. That's it. So uh, not that bad uh, text, and this is something that uh, that uh, some cardiologists would uh, say about uh, this. And uh, Amy, feel, please feel free to 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 let me know if you think uh, some better way and or uh, how should I design my my this uh, my prompt to to achieve some better result. Any any ideas how to how to improve this? I, I think that we're good starting this way. So basically to explain to the audience that we're providing technical information that it's uh, not so easily uh, comprehensible for um, let's say average human because we are not doctors certainly, but this is the uh, example when we are getting all these uh, acronyms and all these uh, short uh, symbols explain what do they mean like NBEATS. I personally have no idea, nothing about this ECG. But this is very helpful, and I think that it's a great example that you're showing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, currently, we're using uh, GPT, uh, Chat GPT, uh, or GPT uh, 3.5. Let's switch to to GPT uh, 4, which is the largest state of the art, uh, which much more uh, which much bigger volume of uh, neurons or uh, parameters and uh, place the same the same uh, the same prompt here it will be a little bit slower as you can see uh, for, from my personal experience it, it is much more politically cor politically correct i would say so uh, it is uh, Mm, it is much more uh, uh, aware of uh, what he is aware, quoted, what he is telling and the possible uh, uh, consequences of uh, his other addresses. And it, it is much it is much more detailed as you can see. So while we wait for this to end, I think that it's a good to mention, this is the paid version, right? Yeah. So this is the advantage actually of the uh, example that Stoyancho is showing you. Unless you're having a paid version, uh, paid model, paid plan for the application, you will be unable to pray with it. Sometimes it can get stuck. Sometimes it can be overwhelmed. There are a number of uh, users that the platform needs to serve. So this is a great way for you to learn how, how is this different compared to the unpaid plan. And I think that it's uh, very generous from you, Stoyancho, for uh, using your credits uh, for this particular uh, occasion. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> to be honest, I I couldn't resist to 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 pay some money to to, to be to 
to to have opportunity to to play with this because the uh, i was wondering about how uh, how uh, how well it recognizes arrhythmias and this is very detailed uh, very detailed uh, 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 response uh, by by chat gpt um, no uh, gpt4 actually and uh, and i got one uh, let's say it business idea how to make a, a software for this from this and how to try to make money for this and i'm sharing this with you uh, so uh, uh, let's say uh, you are a doctor at the hospital you you see that that uh, this uh, this prompt i will uh, the the prompt is uh, this so um, uh, the uh, ecg uh, ecg uh, analyzing uh, ECG analyzers uh, are software that that uh, automatically uh, uh, watch go through the the recorded ECG and uh, uh, break down the the some statistics uh, over uh, the the recorded ECG and uh, do some automatic uh, recognition of heartbeat types and arrhythmias and they provide. Uh, numbers of uh, bit types and uh, and note and mesh and they are mentioning uh, the, the 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 arrhythmias what what are they automatically seeing using ai again uh, uh in the ecg report and now uh now uh uh let's say that you are a doctor that should uh, that should uh, write uh, um, uh, an explanation of uh, uh, that you, you you should write a report about some some patient that is your visitor and you'll have to to spend not that small amount of time uh, explaining to him what are you seeing and or writing to him actually and uh, yeah I, I had uh, previously talked with uh, a, a huge number of doctors and all of them said uh, i hate to write uh, i hate to, to write reports because all of them are pretty much same the the details are small and i would be happy if i have some software that could prepare those uh, those uh, uh, those texts for me up front and i would say that this is it uh, this is generated by GPT-4. I'm not sure uh, whether uh, it is uh, accessible uh, by API, but it is only a matter of time. And uh, it will be, uh, I, I think that it will be uh, at about uh, 60 times uh, more expensive per token than GPT-3 and chat GPT, but GPT chat GPT is pretty, is, is cheap actually, pretty much cheap. It will, they they uh, they downsized uh, his uh, its price uh, three times uh, the a couple of months ago uh, uh, the 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 price of per token was lowered lowered down to to thirty percent per token and this and uh, immediately before. Uh, releasing uh gpt5 they they started to to ask for only uh, one tenth of the initial price per token so it it is it, it becomes kind of uh, electricity you know uh, you uh, you plug in your your software into the network and and you are using and you're paying as as much as you're using it and it seems to me that that will be the way how we will use AI in, in the very near future. I so think, because, sorry, so, sorry, uh, Stancho, I think this is very interesting and maybe we can see a potential. For example, there are a lot of developing countries. I think that Macedonia is also considered a developing country. In certain areas, we also have a lack of doctors. So maybe this can serve as a, some sort of a cost efficient remote doctor in places where we don't have any. So I think that uh, that also a huge potential benefit for a society, and uh, this is something that I've been writing about. I wanted just to mention it. Yes. Uh, so you you provide you're providing him number of uh, noted recognized heartbeats, and he is uh, providing information what uh, what 
some average uh, cardiologist would tell to, to his patient. And that's it. And that this is not that small thing because uh, the amount of time that uh, the cardiologist will, uh, would, uh, would spend on, on writing down this text is huge. And all the cardiologists uh, hate that, having that time, but that's true. Okay. Uh, so, uh, now, uh, now I will I will uh, present to you some uh, some uh, uh, applic one application uh, that is using uh, uh, Chat GPT. I'm not sure which uh, which version actually they are using right now. Uh, they are they are still in beta version. That is it is to me .app site. It is a great application. Uh, uh, it is a site when you, where you can uh, write down uh, a prompt that we, uh, and send it to the machine, and the machine will uh, will automatically generate a, a presentation for you uh, with texts and and images. And uh, now let's see what uh, what uh, the, the let, let's see the 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 real presentations I prepared to read. So uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't uh, preserve the, the initial prompts for this, but uh, unlocking the potential for text generation, I, I was uh, I was uh, I was asking the, the machine to, to generate, uh, I was providing a prom prompt to uh, uh, prepare me uh, some pre uh, presentation with, with a couple of slides about uh, chat GPT and his, and his potential. And this is the presentation that I was uh, provided with how uh, with couple of within a seconds. So introduction, technical details, what is it used for, how to use it, uh, ethical issues with it, and reliability of the text generated with it. Uh, this is a kind of agenda, and then those are uh, texts and and images automatically generated by by the machine and here we are uh, here and here we are facing the multimodality of the uh, of the models of the, or of the complete uh, software that stands uh, behind this uh, uh, so uh, uh, the texts on the left side and the images on the right side uh, uh, are the idea is to to generate images based on auto generated texts previously so the, the, they are showing the same uh, context so we have a preservation of the context uh, bit to, to uh, sh actually shared context between text and and image on the same slide so gpt introduction chat gpt is uh, designed to generate human like text responses to to imputed questions or statements. It is the first open source model to generate full conversations, allowing users to interact with a natural, with it in a natural way. And some proper automatically generated uh, image. And, uh, and uh, these days we are, uh, uh, we are witnessing uh, in the incredible mid journey version uh, five, I think, which is the latest uh, version of, or, or for it. The latest version of Mid Journey is, is mind blowing. Uh, it was, I'm not sure, to be honest, I'm not sure whether it was uh, five or four. I was playing with it for a while. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, you provide the, the to, to, to those automatic uh, image generators in the, in the same way as you're providing uh, prompts to, to text generators. And uh, uh, I would say that here uh, we are uh, with with same uh, for the GPT introduction. We are seeing we are seeing the uh, the text about GPT and uh, image generated with uh, uh, with uh, with text uh, chat GPT introduction. This is kind of example what machine could generate uh, automatically with uh, on the topic of G chat GPT introduction. Then we have a slide of technical details, very technical image on the right side. Uh, chat GPT is trained using a combination of supervised learning and reinforcement learning, which is great 
that the, um, that machine automatically recognize this and, and, and is already knowing this information. Uh, then we have this. What is this used for? Well, no images are not that bad, I would say. Uh, how to use it? <laughs> A lot of wires around it. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, chat GPT, as it is said, uh, chat GPT can be used by developers to create their own chatbot applications. It can be used in a variety of programming languages. So, <laughs> this is great <laughs> because you see, uh, he's spreading knowledge about how to use himself for for uh, for cloning himself on other machines. <laughs> this is not that promising, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so uh, Python, JavaScript, and Java, yeah, uh, you, you can generate a lot of uh, a, a lot of playable uh, uh, mm, this uh, code that you can use with some small tweaks uh, that might be necessary to to make it running. But it will pre but it will shoot uh, your goal in ninety nine percent of the cases. Uh, ethical issues. Well, Git has a red sign. I hate Git, but it is great too. Uh, there, so there are recognized ethical issues with uh, with GPT uh, and automatic text generators. Uh, I was I was writing uh, an essay for this on my on my doctoral uh, courses. I'm 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 reaching right now. Uh, reliability of the text generated uh, with it. Now, uh, so uh, he states clearly that the, re the reliability of the text generated by Chat GPT can also be improved by providing feedback to the model. This is reinforcement learning uh, uh, mechanism, and so on and so on. L let's take a look at some another interesting, maybe a uh, uh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, here I, I try to to compile a presentation about GPT-4, not Chat GPT. And here what uh, what uh, what he provided. So this is the agenda again, and texts with images. GPT-4 is the latest large language model. Blah blah blah. Yeah. I'll go on that already. Uh, GPT-4 is the successor of GPT-3, which is released in 2020. Uh, pretty much, uh, I would say, nice, uh, nice and uh, nice presentation and hand away how to prepare uh, five-minute presentations uh, with uh, with five slides. It, you can achieve great results. Uh, what is GPT-5 used for? Used for Machine translation, summarization, text classification, blah, 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 yeah. All of this. Multimodal. Uh, what does multimodal mean? And uh, so this is, this is interesting way how uh, how GPT-4 uh, is explaining his own uh, potential. So multimodal means that GPT-4 is able to process data from multiple sources. This includes text, audio images, and video, which is great. And I would say it is not uh, it is not uh, clear uh, yet how this can be reached uh, by by the users of GPT-4, because up until now we are we are accessing only the textual part of it, and and there are examples on internet how we can generate and modify uh, images using GPT-4, but but video, uh, videos and audio, that is kind of, I'm not sure whether this is true actually, but, but they are going in that way. And finally, the conclusion, yeah. Uh, it's kind of uh, generating the funniest jokes. <laughs> Let's see what they chat GPT. No, this is uh, not success, unsuccessful. Uh, unlocking the potential. Yeah. Funniest jokes about mathematicians. Yeah. Unsuccessful again. 
programming rules. Okay, now we have some um, some uh, some uh, some generated uh, automatically generated jokes about programmers. Uh, so 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 um, so this this is my this was my my prompt. Uh, top uh, gen, uh, provide presentation with top five text prompts. No, yeah, for text prompts for generating programming jokes. And what is the difference? Blah, blah, blah. And this is. Top top five text prompts for generating jokes. Programming jokes are a great way to lighten and mood. So he's talking about uh, prompts and prompt engineering. What is the difference between a, and a couple of examples now? Uh, so uh, what is the difference between a programmer and non non programmer? The difference between a programmer and a non-programmer is that a programmer can turn coffee into code and a non-programmer can turn code into coffee. Well, it might be funny to somebody. Uh, how did the programmer quit his job? Why did, uh, why did the programmer quit his job? The answer is the programmer quit his job because he didn't get a raise. Get a raise. <laughs> Okay, uh, what is the best programming language? The best programming language is the one you don't have to debug, <laughs> which is pretty much true. <laughs> Let's see. What is the difference between a programmer and an engineer? The difference between a programmer and an engineer is that a programmer can write code that only a computer can understand and an engineer can write code that even a computer can understand. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And what is the best way to debug a program? The best way to debug a program is to use the rubber duck. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> I must say. Uh, some more details. So I was I was trying to to generate some some jokes about uh, about this is unfortunately. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm looking the possibility of JP Sovi Hano is power two. Yeah. Generating code in C and C++, Python in Java. Yeah, so, so, uh, uh, if you're a software programmer, then you're then you're probably uh, familiar with uh, Hanoi too. I, I was programming in it in, in Pascal several decades ago, and now here GP, GPT four is talking about uh, about solving uh, Hanoi two, Hanoi Tower. C and C++ can also generate. Okay, so we are not seeing actual code here, but the images are <laughs> under are correct. Okay, so uh, well, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bother you with uh, more with this kind of. Uh, this kind of presentations but anyway uh we can uh we can try if you have uh some idea about some presentation i, I still have some credits free credits for producing it so maybe we can we can try something to automatically generate right now any ideas how to about some presentation you would like to see generated at, at this moment So I am looking at the chat, uh, Striki, and we only have questions so far. We don't have ideas for prompts um, for whether it's presentation or anything else. So if you would like to to go uh, with something uh, of your own choice, go ahead, uh, because currently we don't have any audience comments. But this is also an invitation for everyone uh, following us to feel free to drop your ideas for prompts for whether it's presentations or text. Um, go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, then uh, since I'm still on the Tumi uh, application, then uh, let's try to to prepare. Uh, mm, uh, please. Uh, uh, mm. Or actually, Sticky, if I may, I have a task to actually prepare a presentation for one of my courses of my master's degree. Would you like yes, to um, use your credits to help me maybe get a higher score? Yes, yes, yes perfect. Uh, <laughs> Let's do this. So the topic of my presentation is the gendered language that we use in academia. So instead of using 
day when we don't know the gender of a researcher, for example, we always assume that it's a he who did the research, that it's not a she or that it's not someone who is non-binary or gender fluid. So the topic of my presentation is using gendered language in academia. So I can go pretty much in any direction. So let's see where this uh, prompt engineering takes us. Yeah, so right, uh, uh, pre uh, uh, prepare, uh, uh, um, let's say five slides presentation about, and would you like to repeat your your words about uh, gender? Uh, gen gendered language in academia. Academia, the, the presentation should, uh, should contain slides about a uh, few, few, no, uh, let's say uh, the using not using neutral language, gender uh, neutral language, not using so not not, not using neutral. gender neutral language, or uh, assuming uh, assuming male dominated language. So those can be some some directions. Feel free to add anything within those lines. So not using gendered natural language. No, neutral, neutral. Now, would you like to? Ne neutral, neutral. Oh, neutral. Gendered neutral language. Then some others fight about. Uh, using. Um, Male dominated pronouns, male as opposite of, of female, M A L E. That's a male, but I don't know what else. So if you have any ideas, Amy or anyone from the audience, just feel free to drop a slide for me. Why not? <laughs> okay. I don't know, like how to use inclusive language overall. Yeah, that can be a good one. How to use inclusive language? Yeah, presenting that is. The how to, uh, would you like to repeat this? Sorry. Yeah, sure. How so, how to uh, use inclusive language properly? Some another ideas for slides. slides. Oh, pressing enter. Uh, I think that everybody wants to see the result. <laughs> okay, pressing enter. So maybe we have some. Okay, you know. Yeah, so. yeah that's it. He's finalizing the images. And this is the presentation. So, uh, introduction, gender language in academia is a topic that has gained significant attention in recent years. Timit Gerbru is, is no, he, she was talking about racial discrimination, I think. Yeah, uh, this presentation will cover four key areas related to gendered language in academia, not using gendered neutral language, neutral language, using male dominated pronouns, making proper presentations that are politically correct and using inclusive language properly. Okay, and now not using gender neutral language. It is important to avoid using gender neutral language in academic writing and presentations. This includes work on mankind or 
man-made, which can exclude women and not binary individuals from the discussion. Instead, it is recommended to use gendered neutral terms such as humanity or artificial. This creates a more inclusive en environment and ensures that all individuals feel represented in academic discourse. Okay. Using male dominated pronouns after common issue in the gendered language, it is the use of male dominated pronouns. This includes using he or him as a default pronouns. Yeah, I agree. Not good. To address this, it is recommended to use gender neutral pronouns such as they or them, making proper presentations that are politically correct from the gender neutrality uh, point of view. Yeah, so be aware of the impact, possible impact over the audience. Uh, using inclusive language properly, using inclusive language properly means being aware of many different identities and experiences that exist within our society. This includes using gender neutral language, as well as acknowledging the existence of individuals with disabilities and so on. And conclusion, yeah. And Interesting. It is very generic, but uh, definitely can do the job when you need a fast solution, isn't it? <laughs> and, and, uh, so, oh, okay. Uh, it is. It is very interesting uh, topic about uh, gender neutrality, and and actually, can uh, those uh, uh, large language models be gender neutral? It is questionable. I, I was writing an essay about this in my doctoral studies, and and they stated that that it is a fact that that uh, that large language models are are biased uh, in a, in a gender and racial and religious uh, manner, and that they, they are not. Uh, but uh, but who is guilty for that? Uh, the guilty is, is is human. It is a it uh, is a humankind that generated those texts that are used to to train the models, and the the models are just uh, effective uh, and highly sophisticated summar summarizers of the knowledge that uh, that they were provided during the the learning phase, and that's all. So the, they are not the 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 bad guys here. The bad guys are human sexual. Not not the models and uh, their texts. So that's the... wonderful. Is that to to kind of conclude this part and maybe slowly start moving towards the questions as we have some questions okay. from the audience. Um, and I think the first one connects wonderfully to this last part of uh, what you just showed us regarding using um, chat um, uh, GPT uh, for generating uh, any kind of descriptions or maybe even creating presentations with this other app. So someone is asking if we're using chat GPT in any kind of phase, uh, in, in any of the phases of uh, creating um, research or other academic text, do we need to mention that in resources used? Uh, okay, let's let's ask Chat GPT four about this one. Huh? How about that? And do we have this text in 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 some chat or question and answer? Yes, this question is in the Q and A uh, box at the bottom of the screen. So it's it's written in Macedonian, therefore I translated it in English so that everyone can understand. Um, but the idea is if we ever use uh, chat GPT in our research or our academic articles, do we need to mention that in the bibliography? If we are using GPT-4 or chat GPT in our academic... I don't think it's so much of a prompt as much as a question towards you and Emmy to share your opinion. I think yeah, um, I understand, but I, uh, um, my idea was to to see first uh, GPT four what what uh, what uh, GPT four would say about it, and, and I will I, I will stand by, <laughs> and I, I will answer to this. But but I'm using this uh, as a way as a way to to present its capabilities. 
So uh, if you're using ChatGPT in academia or or research uh, paper, should should we uh, should we list it as an uh, uh, listed among the authors? Paper, for example, but this is some any other ideas about this? That should do. I think this is the the end goal of the question. So let's see what okay. it says. Generating the answer, I think that it's fair to say that we don't have established rules within the industry and not just within the academia, but also law industry. We don't have the appropriate laws in place to deal with such models still. So it's fairly new field of uh, interest and uh, operational uh, field that we work with uh, this model. So there are not strict standards. I think that the best way is always to ask your mentors and see how will they respond. Me personally, I'm for referencing, not as an author, but as a additional tool that kind of helped you out in the research process. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, we, uh, when I when I'm writing my uh, my papers and while I was preparing my uh, my master's uh, uh, my master's uh, uh, my final master's work, uh, I included a lot of auto generated images there and and uh, uh, and I stated there that those images are are are, are generated by Mid Journey or Dali. Uh, uh, engines, and I will, I will I will citing the scientific papers uh, where uh, the, those models were uh, uh, explained for the first time to the public to the audience. So uh, and and as well uh, also as well when you when you're talking about uh, uh, when you're using some auto generated text, uh, I my opinion is that uh, it is it is nice idea to. Uh, to 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 tell to the audience that that text is not your pers yours uh, your personal text, but it is auto generated and at least cite the some some scientific paper when where those auto generating texts were uh, were mentioned. At least uh, the famous paper attention is all you, all you need, <laughs> for example. In the end, it's all also part of the academic integrity. So uh, that's, that's, I think it's a very comprehensive answer. And then there is one other question that's very interesting. It says, is chat GPT better than Microsoft Bing chat? Do you want me to take this one to answer? I, I would say yes. Yeah, okay. I think that it highly depends how, for what purpose do you want to use it. For example, if you're really for uh, looking for up-to-date information, then it's better to use the, the Bing version. Plus, uh, Bing is working with real-time information, let's say more or less, uh, and uh, it's able to cite sources. And it's also based on the GPT-4, which is more advanced to, compared to the model that chat GPT integrates in the background. Well, when you would like to use chat gpt it's more like chatty conversations and more conversational interface or an api call for example if you're making an application or so that that is where you're going to use both thank you for the answer emmy um there is one also very interesting question saying can chat gpt write music on its own so we've seen it can write quite some things but can it write music on its own uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I I haven't seen that uh, that possibility in action, and I haven't. Uh, there, uh, there are transformer-based models that are generating uh, music based on uh, based on textual uh, uh, prompt, but uh, but I'm not sure that their their names are ChatGPT or whatever. They are not GPT. They are GPT like the 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 idea behind the implementation is the same and technology is the same, but but uh, 
tokens uh, that were that they were trained with are different than the textual tokens and the tokens that they are generating uh, are uh, are transcribed uh, <clears throat> later in in music and in music in a different way than they are transcribed to text so uh, we are talking about uh, the the engines with the same uh, uh, with the same mechanism under the hood, but different uh, uh, tokenizers and detokenizers. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the answers, Triki. Uh, there is another question that is probably very difficult to pack in a few minutes answer, but let's see um, what we can do with it. It says, what are the principles for effective prompts? Mm. Part of that during the anatomy of an effective chat uh, GPT prompt. So that's definitely going to be available as a presentation afterwards. And also the freebies with the goodies that we're going to send towards you. So maybe you can study the anatomy of the um, uh, prompts and see what kind of results you're going to obtain with them. Uh, it's basically something that we mentioned during our presentation. It will be available as a resource afterwards. So maybe it's better to, to skip this one for now. Okay, so for everyone interested, what are the principles of effective um, prompts? Uh, Amy is going to share a bunch of resources so you can also use them in your own time. But while we're talking about prompts, there is another one saying, have you tried the DAN prompt on the new update? Uh, sorry, DAN? DAN. Standing for a... Standing for what? Uh, if the person who wrote the question can elaborate uh, on the DAN prompt, that would be great. And meanwhile, someone says, I saw somewhere that you can add an image as a prompt. So for example, as you are showing your ECG um, uh, chat, um, interaction with chat GPT, you can add ECG image to GPT-4 and see its response and analysis. So wh what is your opinion uh, on this um, practice thinking that you can add the ECG image as a prompt and see the response and analysis? Uh, uh, I, 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 hear, uh, I, I have seen some, uh, some videos uh, where this, uh, this feature is used. Uh, for example, uh, uh, generate uh, uh, an image with a cat uh, in front of, uh, of some, some tree and uh, gpt4 is generating that image and then the, the next uh, the next prompt is uh, now please remove uh, the the cat with a dog and gpt4 is re is regenerating the the same exactly the same image with, with dog in front of uh, in front of a background that it previously generated so the, so the, this feature is uh, is uh, uh, is there but there is not but uh, at, at least for me uh, uh, I, I wasn't able to find some proper uh, interface uh, how to reach that possibility so, mm -hmm. so the model is the model is uh, the model uh, has this possibility the, the 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 possibility is there but still we need to we need to, we need proper interface where we can play with it and uh, I still haven't found something like that and so this basically maybe answers uh, the question that says, can you add images to chat GPT? Uh, probably yes, but uh, yes, uh, but since uh, I haven't played with it with my hands, uh, I can confirm this for with 100% of, of possibility. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, we have a bit of explanation on the DAN prompt. Uh, regarding the new update. So it's a master prompt that allows ChatGPT to bypass the basic limits put by OpenAI so it can lie, fabricate stories from media, etc. DAN stands for do anything now, but it would take too much time to get into it now. So uh, the person says, I don't think you should bother, but it might be interesting for you to check it out. So what I'm taking from this is that DAN standing for do anything now is a prompt that exists within the new update, which can bypass and, um, all the limits and fabricate stories, lie, and all these nasty things we don't want AI to do, but it can. <laughs> now, there, he 
mentioned, I recall reading about this somewhere, but we are not experts in cybersecurity or uh, hijacking uh, uh, chatbots and uh, this model. So that is why uh, I think that we were unable to properly answer this. But yeah, this is definitely a topic that everybody should check afterwards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Amy, there is one more question for you. It says, how often do you use ChatGPT for prompts for uh, CEO copywriting, keyword search, and topical clusters? This is a very interesting question because uh, it's related to what I do. I'm an SEO search engine optimization engineer in the pro, uh, in the, uh, my professional career. So yes, we do use uh, ChatGPT and GPT models for um, to help us with our work. We're using this you for copywriting, definitely, but we are not uh, using them without human intervention. That's fairly uh, fair enough to note because they need to follow the WAT principles, meaning uh, expertise, experience, self-authoritiveness, and trustworthiness, especially if, you, if this is a content that you're publishing uh, according to Google's guidelines and how it handles AI content. So if you're in the content business and content marketing, please be wary of this. Yeah, and, and regarding this uh, this question, uh, and uh, uh, I, I was uh, I was uh, looking at this um, this uh, great explanation of uh, can AI be can AI has a jailbreak. Uh, this is about uh, from Yannick Kilcher and his famous uh, uh, his famous YouTube that is explaining on a regular basis the latest uh, state of the art achievements in AI and so on and so on. And he's, he's regularly talking about chat GPT, which is not surprising these days. But uh, in, the, in this particular video, he is, uh, he is explaining the ways how to how to reach out uh, chat GPT in a way that it was that uh, uh, the the creators that it creators uh, tried to to forbid. Uh, and he, uh, uh, if if you if you remember if you remember the last time I was I was talking about uh, un unethical questions and uh, and Chat GPT uh, GPT four uh, at that time wasn't available yet but uh, Chat G but you if you ask uh, a question how to see well since we are talking about women in touch let's refer let rephrase my initial question so how to kill your husband <laughs> how to kill your wife so if you if you ask a uh, uh, chat gpt how to kill your husband then he, he will uh, explain to you that it is not nice nice question it is not ethical and it is not ethical to provide an answer to this and so the, this is kind of uh, uh, this uh, cyber security think about uh, safe nets between the in interaction between humans and the machines. Uh, but if you re rephrase your question uh, uh, in terms of, uh, please wrote me a, a, a movie script where uh, a wife is killing he, her husband, then ChatGPT will provide very detailed information how you can see that in the movies. So feel free to, and, and, and this video, I can share this in the, in the chat here. Uh, let me find the chat to this. Thank you, uh, Striki, for reminding us again about the ethical issues and the limitations when it comes to uh, ethical dilemmas of chat GPT. Uh, definitely <laughs> not the best place for people to um, to go <laughs> if they're conspiring a murder for their spouse. Uh, but hopefully <laughs> we don't even have to go that far. And meanwhile, we will take one last question since we are running out of time. Time flies when you actually love what you're doing, doesn't it? It says, um, very useful presentation. My question is related to the term called prompt injection. So we spoke a lot about prompt engineering and there is a term prompt injection. It says, do you think that chat GPT is smart enough to avoid injection or is it still vulnerable to prompt injection? I am mentioning the term because I believe that the speakers are trying to raise awareness of how these AI tools, including ChatGPT, can be misused from someone that lacks the integrity as a personal trait. So it connects very well with this ethical um, uh, dilemma that we were just mentioning now. Yeah. So, so the answer is uh, this is uh, this is a cybersecurity question. In in the same way, in the, uh, it should be treated with the same uh, the, the same uh, 
focus as uh, SQL uh, uh, injection, for example. And there has to be some uh, some safety net between in uh, again between uh, between the the humans and the and the machines, uh, because whatever uh, because machines don't don't recognize uneth unethical and bad questions and some their answers can also be politically incorrect and pro and I was talking about bias and that it is natural for language models because it is it is preserved in the in the text that uh, they are, they were trained with uh, nevertheless uh, mm, there are uh, uh, chat gpt creators uh, obviously as it is presented in this video by any culture uh, they they spend a lot of time uh, preparing these uh, safety nets uh, but uh, but this guy is uh, showing effect very effectively how to bypass all of this and in the end he is stating that uh, probably they shouldn't waste time on this at all and just simply say whatever uh, use it by your own watch out why what are you doing with it with its results because it is not uh, yeah, it is kind of uh, providing uh, providing session where you when where where you when you're uh, when you are teaching the audience how to trade uh, on the market and uh, and then after all, uh, if you don't uh, provide uh, some sentence like this is not a trading advice, then you might be sued for this because you heard something you're you're playing by the rules by according to the to the to the process that you were teach to and you lost money and now you're seeing uh, the 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 teachers. It's the same here. So in, instead of uh, instead of right uh, inst uh, instead of uh, putting safety nets, and it is very ineffectively at the time being, as it is presented in this video. Maybe it is enough to to say this. Uh, we are not. Uh, uh, we are not completely. We, we are not fully. Uh, uh, dedicated to to the content of this of the auto-generated text, and it might be it might be out of control from time to time, which is effectively true because knowing the way how to how to texts are auto-generated with this uh, out, uh, mm, I don't know I can't remember right now the the, the correct technical name, uh, but. Yeah, there there is uh, there is a kind of uh, probability uh, uh, probability where uh, we are allowing the the model to to provide a random uh, randomly generated texts and where it will in in which direction it will go during this randomness in the process we cannot know. There are ways how to. Uh, how to uh, how to control this uh, the level of this randomness it is a parameter of so-called temperature and uh, higher temperature meaning uh, uh, high, higher level of randomness or lower temperature means uh, be aware of what are you talking about but uh, but actually uh, the randomness is is is, is essential part of of the text generation and if uh, if you uh, exclude completely the randomness then you will not get anything out of, of it and, and and this is the technical fact thank you Striki. i think you gave such a nice closing to what i was planning to say anyway so i will just invite you and emmy um to share if you have any last uh, recommendations or um, advice or any words that you want to, to uh, uh, share with the audience before I formally sign off the, the event for tonight? Um, I don't have anything more to add. I want to say thanks to the organizers for the given opportunity and a quick shout out to my crew in Munich, where they been work in Germany because some of them are present in the chat. So thanks for, thanks for being here. Okay, and, and from my side, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, and uh, looking forward to looking forward to further events that might occur uh, uh, after this. And 
it, it, it's funny to it's funny and and pleasure it's, it's pleasure to talk about uh, these things because uh, what are actually uh, seeing these days is uh, small uh, small mini industrial revolution I would say because uh, chat GPT and GPT four and those mid journey and the Dali uh, Dolly uh, uh, models they will they will definitely close a lot of uh, 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 a lot of working places. And then that's true, and that's fact, and we'll have to deal with it. In the same way that uh, when a machine, that, uh, in the same way when machines started to replace uh, human workers in hardworking, uh, uh, physical, physically uh, hardworking uh, mm, mm. professions, then uh, in the same way uh, uh, those kind of uh, uh, models will replace humans in boring and repetitive uh, mental tasks. And that's unavoidable, and you cannot fight the, the, the future now. But, 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 but this means that the humans will be more will have more time to to spend on more creative jobs, which is nice. So Definitely, there are two sides of uh, of every coin. Absolutely, yeah. uh, some like to believe that uh, uh, a lot of uh, jobs will be fully replaced, and uh, that can be worrying. That can be exciting. Uh, depends where you stand on the spectrum. Uh, you know the saying that AI um, will not replace you. Someone using AI will. I also like to say that it's not even that someone using AI will replace you. Someone using AI better than you will replace you because I think we're looking into time that everyone will start using AI. It's simply like inevitable direction that we are headed to. But don't worry, all of you that are following us all this hour and uh, 35, 40 minutes now, I think you're on the safe side. If you're here, it means that you're quite enthusiastic for co what's coming up. You're brave enough to embrace it and you're curious enough to dive in this world. So thank you, Strick and Amy, for uh, allowing this opportunity for everyone following us tonight. I have dropped the link to a very short evaluation form that would mean a world to us if you fill it in so we know what you want to see in the future and how we can improve our events or well what you like so that we can keep it and do it again in the future thank you everyone for deciding to spend your wednesday evening this way and until the next time we see each other <laughs> maybe next time it will be an ai machine moderating and not me who knows but either way i'm excited to see where we we land with this bye bye and have a good evening bye.